Things are heating up in the AI wars as Google finally presents a threat to Nvidia's trillion dollar monopoly. The stakes are currently so high, which is why I think information like this is very relevant to people following the AI space. This one's super interesting. Caroline, I think you can fall into the camp of people who's been like, hey, I've known this for a while. I've known that TPUs are so efficient. Does it really make a difference that you have Meta now buying into this? What does it mean to have a market awaken to the possibilities of what Google has developed? I think what's different here is before Alphabet had been selling it as part of the cloud winning formula. Come to us, you can use our cloud and you use our TPUs, which are on their seventh generation now. They've been developing these for 10 years. They've been offering them to other clients since 2018. We haven't seen them really sell them specifically to others to use within their data centers, not just Meta, but maybe banks who need to trade at high frequency. That's a clear area of edge for them. So they're starting to get this inbound. In fact, a lot of analysts, Stacey Ragson over there, um, we've heard also from Bernstein, you've also heard from Gil Luria saying, this is kind of an obvious dimension of the business model. The question, though, is what will NVIDIA do about it? Now, we've heard before reports from the information that OpenAI was getting very close to potentially taking TPUs from Google Alphabet, maybe using their cloud more ever since that relationship where Microsoft got disrupted a bit. And then NVIDIA went and put $100 billion into OpenAI and said, oh, please do use our GPUs if you wouldn't <laughs> like to. What is Emeta going to suddenly get offered from Jensen Wang? That's my key question because you've seen big deals with Anthropic, but Anthropic suddenly has got some more investment from NVIDIA as well. There's going to be a tussle at the top here, but be sure, Jensen Wang's been eyeing TPUs for a while. And Alphabet, this has been a winning formula. That's why Gemini 3 has been so efficient. And efficiency is everything. It's all about energy and what more they can do with it because that's going to be the bottleneck. Okay, so if we do get, and we have, something more efficient, something more energy efficient. Caroline, is that enough? Or is this an ecosystem that's incredibly sticky? So even if there are hyperscalers and others who want to use Alphabet's chips, if they're already with NVIDIA, can they just so easily change over? What's going to be interesting is how the development of the software works out here. Because we understand that Alphabet is doing a lot to show the prowess, not only of the TPU, but also the software that goes with it. And some of the ability to use software that's adjacent, not just their JAX, which is their own programming language that they've developed to go alongside TPUs, but you can use others that use different ecosystems. Look, the thing with NVIDIA is that they have CUDA. And everyone is locked in not only to the hardware that NVIDIA offers, but the entire ecosystem that NVIDIA offers. If Alphabet can start to chip away at that and show, look, with us, you can have prowess the entire way through, I think there is going to be a real recognition that this is a clear alternative. But remember, the whole vertical integration story, what it, Google has shown so well is that it can develop incredible models because it's using its own tech stack and then it's putting it out into the ecosystem we're all using it. Look what Alibaba is just announcing. They too want to be a full vertically integrated company that makes their own chips, that develops the models, that offers it out on their cloud and then offers the models as well. But also remember, this is what Amazon does. Yes, we're talking about TPUs, but Trainium is on their third iteration. We understand that many people are using not only for training, but are we going to use it not just for inference, but the training of models as well? How much can Amazon start to show its competitive edge as well with its chips, not just its AWS offering? By the way, maybe you can clear something up. I don't really understand Jensen Wang's argument that the GPUs they sell, what are we in now, Blackwell or mm -hmm. Hopper? Um, Rubin, Vero Rubin for the next one. Right, so those are capable of many different things, right? The graphics processing units yeah. are flexible, as you may have read last night, <laughs> whereas the tensor processing units are supposed to be ASIC, so they're yeah. um, application specific. However, if that application is AI, <laughs> and I machine mean, learning, I don't care if GPUs can show me uh, good graphics. I want AI, right? From and I chips. think this is where the battleground is going to be. How much efficiency can you wring out from this hardware with the software within it? And if Jensen Wang can say, look, my GPUs have been able to accelerate your AI models, your machine learning that much faster. And by the way, I've got a chunk of change that I can continue to invest in you as a company and continue to invest in your entire ecosystem. Maybe there's the winning formula. But this is why Google has made everyone sit up straight and why analysts have become noisier and noisier as to how much this has been a winning formula for them, is that the DeepMind were able to go directly to their semiconductor team and say, look, with this, we're learning this. Let's work in it together. Let's understand where the efficiencies can be brought. And I really do think that the infrastructure issue 
is not going to be whether you eventually can lay your hands on the hardware. It's going to be whether you can do more with the, the grid, with the electricity. And if they can show energy efficiency at this point, that's going to be what's music to the government's ears and therefore to users' ears. But I just think this turf war is just starting. We're all going to start talking about Inferentia and Tranium and what Amazon's doing and what everyone else is doing in ASICs. Because remember, that's what Broadcom has been doing so well on. All these companies, Meta's designing Broadcom its own chips. Broadcom was up 12% yesterday. OpenAI is developing its own chips. Eventually, maybe that's going to become commoditized, not just large language models. Now, to give you more context, take a look at this GPU versus TPU comparison. You can see each of their benefits and exactly what they are. You can find this and much more in our new AI course, which is having an early exclusive release right now on this channel. Inside, you'll go from confused to confidently understanding the key players, the real trends, and exactly what's happening in the world of AI right now and why this matters. Because this is a private early access offer to viewers of this channel, you can secure our entire course right now for a special price of just 99 bucks. Come Sunday at midnight, the course will be jumping in price to 199 or 299 bucks. Don't miss the chance to get instant access to the AI landscape course at the lowest price it will ever be. We will also be adding new modules to this course over time and no extra price. Check the link in the description to check it out. The energy problem is about to decide who wins the AI race. Google's newest TPU doubles energy efficiency compared to previous TPU generations, meaning they can handle the same workload with half the power or twice the workload with the same power. Imagine the implications accelerating AI inference at massive scale while slashing energy demand in an era when data centers are demanding gigantic amounts of energy. Industry experts widely agree that Google's TPUs outperforms NVIDIA's GPUs in performance per watt in their specialized use cases, especially for inference tasks, making them the go-to for many cost-conscious AI deployments. For a real-world example, Midjourney switched from NVIDIA's chips to Google's TPUs and saw their monthly compute costs plummet 65% from $2 million to 700 k freeing up resources to innovate faster and invest in the rest of the business without a huge energy bill weighing them down, or at least making it a bit smaller. Here's why energy efficiency is quickly becoming the most important thing in AI. When you're training an AI model or running billions of questions through it every day, you're not just buying chips. You're paying for electricity and that electricity bill never stops. It's like the difference between driving a car that gets 10 miles per gallon versus one that gets 30. Sure, the car itself costs more money, but over time, it's the gas that kills you. Experts forecast that by the end of the decade, cutting edge AI computer racks could demand over 500 kilowatts of power per rack. To put that in perspective, that's enough to power hundreds of homes all going into one rack of computers. When your electricity bill is that massive, even small improvements in efficiency save you millions of dollars every single month. But it gets even bigger than just money. The whole world is running out of electricity for AI. Data centers are being built faster than power companies can provide electricity to them. Governments are getting nervous about AI companies using up all the power that regular people and businesses need. So if Google figured out how to make chips that do more work while using less or same energy, it's not just a cost advantage, it's solving the biggest bottleneck that's slowing down the entire AI industry. So these AI companies are selling incredibly powerful, but incredibly electricity thirsty chips. So the company that cracks energy efficiency has a shot at winning everything. So Google has this massive advantage, and that's exactly what Google seems to be doing with these TPU chips they design themselves. Google has this massive energy advantage with energy efficient chips, but there's a reason why most companies still use NVIDIA. NVIDIA built a trapdoor that makes it almost impossible to leave. Over 4 million developers around the world use NVIDIA's CUDA programming, and it's been downloaded over 40 million times. If your team has spent months or years building AI systems using CUDA, switching to Google's chips means you have to do a huge amount of work to adapt all the code to the new chips. This is probably the smartest business move NVIDIA ever made. They don't just sell chips, they created an entire world that developers live in called CUDA. Imagine if every app on your phone only worked with one specific phone brand. You could never switch brands without losing all your apps. That's what NVIDIA did with AI. Every major AI framework, every tool that developers use, every bit of code that companies spent years perfecting, it all runs on CUDA and CUDA only works on NVIDIA's chips. So even if Google's chips are cheaper, more energy efficient, and just as powerful, 
Companies can't easily switch because it would mean throwing away years of work. Companies that try to move away from NVIDIA would have to rewrite their code, retrain their teams, and risk delays in launching products. And for most companies, the cost of switching is higher than the cost of just staying with NVIDIA. It's like being locked into a subscription you can't cancel without losing everything. And the trap gets stronger every year because every time NVIDIA releases new chips, they add new features to CUDA, which means developers rely on it even more, making it even harder to consider leaving. That's why even though Google, Amazon, and others are making their own chips, NVIDIA still dominates. They locked everyone in before anyone realized what was happening. Here's where I think things get really interesting. Google is betting that if you control everything from the chip design to software to the final products, you can be NVIDIA's trap by creating an even better system. They're not trying to copy CUDA, they're building something completely different where everything works together perfectly because one company designed all of it. It's the difference between buying parts from different stores and building something yourself versus buying a finished product where every piece was designed to work together from day one. Google is the only major tech company that owns every single piece. They design the chips, they write the AI software, they run the data centers, and they have billions of users on products like Search and YouTube. That's an advantage NVIDIA can't match no matter how good CUDA is. The question now is whether Google's vertical integration can overcome NVIDIA's ecosystem lock-in. Picture this, a potential client searches for what your business offers and your YouTube video appears. Before they've even booked a call, they've built trust with you, turning them into a warm lead. That's why our clients are hitting $100,000 months because YouTube turns attention into authority. If you run a business, book a call and I'll show you exactly how to make this happen.